Morning at Collinwood. A fog has blown in from the sea, and it clings to the ground, and the trees make familiar shapes strange and frightening. From the window, everything looks unreal. And in our lives, a similar mist seems to have spread. And who can tell what is true and what is not? Johnson, good morning. Oh, excuse me. I thought you were out. I wouldn't have busted in. No, that's all right. Actually, I, I could use some help. Is something wrong with the draperies? I'm trying to take them down. Well. What's, what's, what's the matter? Well, it's not my job to say what comes up or down. I try to do my best to keep this place running. And you do a marvelous job, Mrs. Johnson. Thank you. But I like those draperies. Yes, they, they are beautiful. I can't imagine anything prettier in here. No, neither can I. It's just that they, they, they make the room so, so dark. Well, it's a bedroom. I'm aware of that. Most people sleep better when the light can't get in. I didn't sleep at all last night. Well, it wasn't because of any light coming in. No, no, it wasn't. It's just I'd be, I'd be more comfortable if, 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 if the room was lighter. Well, I'll ask Mrs. Stoddard. No. I mean, c couldn't we just keep this between ourselves? Well, if Mrs. Stoddard found out, what would she say? Well, I'm sure she wouldn't mind. Well, then why can't I ask her? Because, because I, I saw someone standing there last night behind the draperies. Now, now do you understand? someone behind those curtains, you must tell Mrs. Stoddard and Mr. Collins. Uh, no, actually, I, I, I don't mean to say I saw anyone. I, I just don't want to start any trouble. Well, the time to stop trouble is when you first see it. Of course, but, but, but I, I may not have seen anyone. Perhaps, perhaps it, it was just a nightmare. That, that's it. But you said you didn't sleep at all, all night. Well, not soundly. Do you know that, that kind of sleep where you're half awake and half asleep all that night, all night? You, you, you know that sort of thing? No. No, I didn't either until recently. I've been very nervous and upset lately. Oh, you've noticed. I, I suppose everyone's noticed. Well, I must say, you, you just haven't been yourself lately. Not ever since Dr. Woodard's funeral. Yes, since that very day. It's, it's true. Dr. Woodard and I had been friends for, for many years. Oh, he was a fine man. Yes. To everyone. A wonderful doctor and such a good friend he must have been. To Please, me. Mrs. Johnson. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm just upset. He stood there last night. Dr. Woodard? You thought you saw him? He, he spoke to me very clearly. Oh, Miss Hoffman. Now, now I know it, it wasn't him, of course. But it, it, was, it was so real, it, it frightened me. I, I just have to keep remembering that it was only a dream. You know better than that, Julia. Mrs. Johnson, did, 
Did you hear that? What? You uh, know it was no dream. That? Did, 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 did you hear anything? Oh, you're, you're ill. I trusted you. <laughs> you shouldn't have. Why did you do it, Julia? Why? I, I won't listen to you. Oh, Miss Hoffman. Oh, help me. Help me! Not exactly what I had in mind to end our evening. I'm sorry. I half expect Roger Collins to come running out of the house ordering me off his property. <laughs> he won't. I can guarantee it. I know it's silly, but I just had this, this feeling that I should come home. Like Cinderella at midnight? <laughs> yes. At the first stroke, I turn into a pumpkin or whatever she did. I enjoy dinner. Yeah? Very much. You know, I believe you. Don't you usually? You know the answer to that. Hmm. A firm no. You make it very difficult for a girl. Yep. And I'm not even fighting a bad first impression. You had your mind made up about me before we ever even met. Rich, spoiled, silly, in one word, impossible. And I haven't done anything to change that? I'd honestly like to think I have. Keep on trying, kid. Well, now, this is more what I had in mind. Why didn't you do it, then? I'm a slow starter. Busy tomorrow. We could have lunch. Mind if we finish tonight first? I'll pick you up at your office. Will you? I have to talk to you about Julia Hoffman, your favorite client. Have you seen her? No. Really? I'm very worried about her. And I'm very worried about you. Come here. We were standing like this. What happened? You sure changed quick. I'm sorry. I really am. I think you'd better go. Yeah. I've, I've gotten a headache. Suddenly? Yes. There are some things I have to do. Tonight? You can't understand. I can't explain. All of a sudden, you're starting to sound like Julia Hoffman the night she came to my office. I'm not like her. At all. Not yet, anyway. You know, I don't think it's very healthy living in this house. Good night. Oh, by the way, I'm busy for lunch tomorrow.
You're a grown woman. Don't be afraid to walk in your own room. You locked the door yourself when you left. There are no ghosts. Believe that. Mrs. Johnson must have thought. Don't start thinking about her or anyone here. Why don't you go back to your own life? To Windcliff? Forget Barnabas Collins. Leave this. It, it it ran from, 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 from under the coat. What coat? The, the white coat near the armoire. There isn't any coat. Is something wrong? Oh, uh, Miss Hoffman thought she saw a rat. I did, I, I did. Well, I'll tell you what. There is some rat poison down in the cellar, and I'll put a few pellets around just in case uh, the rat comes back. You were going to say in case I really did see it, weren't you? I was going to say just what I said. Carolyn. Tell Barnabas to stop. I don't carry messages. Tell him I can fight back. Oh, I'm sure he knows that. Remind him that I know his weaknesses as well as he knows mine. I am at the point where I'm not going to threaten anymore. I will do something. There is a very thin line between love and hate. I know how thin it is. So, Dr. Hoffman is turning violent. She's right, she knows my weaknesses. Do you seriously think that she will try to harm me? You're here alone all day without even willing to... To guard me? You can say it. It's a fact of my life. I'll hand her alone. No. I don't want you in the room. Dr. Hoffman. Won't you come in? This is most unexpected. Do sit down. Would you care for some port? This is not a social visit. I'll be very direct. Some very, very strange things have been happening to me. Very upsetting things. I'm sorry to hear that. You're responsible for them. I want you to stop. Well, I can hardly stop what I know nothing about. Don't lie. I never do. You are capable of anything. I only underestimated your psychic powers. You will never frighten anyone as much as you have frightened me. Well, what did frighten you so? Oh, oh wait. Let me guess. 
please. It was night. You were in your room. You saw a figure. Indistinct. You admit it? But you recognize the voice. Dr. Woodard. A ghost. You are responsible. No. But you made that figure appear. I did not. Then how do you know about it? I know about it because I saw it myself. You... you saw it? When? Last night. Where? Here, in this room, where you're standing now. He spoke to me. He accused me of being responsible for his death. You were. I didn't do it, you did. Do you have to remind me, too? I'm afraid I'm developing a conscience, Julia. Julia? Do you mind? I started to change last night. A statement I'm almost embarrassed to make to you. But the change wasn't what we envisioned. A spiritual one more than a physical one. We've shared so much. Secrets, plans. Some of them disappointing to us both. And the treatments. I don't think you realize how depressed I was when they didn't work. You turned on me then. I turned on everyone. Not Carolyn. I needed her. Not Vicky. Josette is dead. I am no longer the romantic that I was. I realize now that I cannot recreate Josette any more than I can summon a ghost. Josette has no desire to see me. Otherwise, she wouldn't come back. You're lying. What? Huh? I would never give up that dream of Josette. You will not permit me to change. Oh, Dave Woodard didn't come into this room. I don't believe a word of it. So he's your ghost. Your guilt is so obsessive that you want to suffer alone. I don't, I don't ever want to be alone, ever. You know that. Julia, I don't want you to be. That's what I'm trying to say. I owe you so many apologies. Perhaps sometime I will be able to make them all, but one I must say now. You offered me nothing but the best of yourself, and I chose then to ignore it. I made myself live in a lost dream world. I, I cannot do that anymore. Barnabas. Will you help me? Julia. I, I want to help you. I care for you, Julia. I need you. I don't know. I up. When I came into this house don't tonight... Don't think about why you came. Tomorrow, we will spend the evening together. And we'll sort it all out. I, I must go. You won't be afraid now. I have only one fear. That when I see you tomorrow night, I will find you changed again. That will not happen. Good night, Barnabas. Barnabas, that was very cruel of you. She really loves you. You shouldn't have done that. Carolyn. You could have thought of some other way. Carolyn, you're tired. Come. I am tired. 